Hello everybody. I'm just gonna give you guys a second to get logged on. I'm gonna check and see if I can share this into the creative group. I have my laptop down on a chair because I have so much stuff on my table that um, it just doesn't fit. So, pretty awesome. Today is the first day of the holiday catalog. And it's also the first day of the new online store, which has been pretty awesome. I had a couple of customers already place orders and they're uh, navigating the new site. From what I understand, the pictures are better. It's easier to navigate. Um, there's a lot of positive things about the new store, so I'm very excited about all of that. And I can't seem to find my own video. That's hysterical. Oh, there it is, okay. So we'll just see if I can share that and then we'll be ready to go. So uh, it took me, I'm just gonna put that to the side. It took me a whole month to open cards from last month. And um, this weekend I opened them. Actually, I think it might've been Monday because I took a day off on Sunday and I vegged out on the couch and did a whole lot of nothing which I haven't done since March. Um, so I had a whole day off and it was wonderful and I came back rejuvenated and tired. That laying around business is kind of makes you tired. Hey Tammy, hi Janice, hi Melissa, hey Mary Jo. Um, so uh, I'm gonna jump in. I wanna show you um, the cards that I got last month from friends and um, birthday cards and all sorts of things. But then I have a really, yeah, my hair got real long. <laughs> um, I have a really cool technique that I want to share with you um, that I just started playing with. The um, In the new catalog, in the holiday book, they have this really pretty uh, snowflake paper. And some of it has uh, the salted background technique. So you get it wet, you uh, sprinkle salt over the top, it lifts the color out and it looks spotted and dotted and it's awful pretty. Um, but the colors are really inspiring, but I'm not quite ready for snowflakes in Christmas yet. So I decided that I was gonna use the colors and pull in a different stamp set and we can play with that together. I just got it started, but I haven't um, actually gone anywhere with it yet. So it'll be fun to do that together. And what else? Um, there is the Zany Zebras card class this week. It's still not too late to get in on those packets. I have um, some left, not a whole lot. I'll have to prep more potentially, um, which is a good problem to have. So thank you everybody who has been taking online classes and loving them. Okay, I'm gonna flip the camera and get this party started so you guys can see what's going on. Just give me one second. Sorry about the, uh, I usually put my hand over the camera, but. That wasn't too terrible. Hey, Diane. Nice to see everybody, okay. All right, so this is the, um, I'm gonna see if I can pull it and see on my laptop here. Okay. This is the paper that I was talking about and the page in the catalog, and they have these blue adhesive back gems, and can I just tell you, the catalog just doesn't do them justice. They're so beautiful. Um, where they're at. And for what I was thinking about doing, I also grabbed these, and these are from the main book. They are the Frosted and Clear Epoxy Droplets. So half the package are like clear silver, and the other half are frosted. So like a matte look, and then a, a shiny look, depending on what we're gonna go for. But I, I thought between those that we would have some fun. It also matches a bolt of ribbon that I had out on the table. Speaking of hair, there's another one. <laughs> That's the problem with having a lot of hair, it's everywhere. Um, here is the Snowflake Splendor ribbon that matches. Isn't it beautiful? Um, and like I said, I'm not quite ready for snowflakes, so I have a different plan in mind with what we're gonna do today. But before I get into all that, oh my gosh, this new catalog is amazing. If you have ordered for me in the last six months and you would like a holiday book, just send me a private message with your address and I'll pop one in the mail to you. The book is probably the best Christmas book I have seen to date. Oh my gosh, these Christmas trees. I got this bundle as a half price item today. I was so excited. And then um, this whole page is me 
grateful heart. Uh, yeah, I, I can't even tell you how happy I am with this book. So there'll be a lot to come. And I, I almost got overwhelmed on what to show because there's so much that I love. But I'm going to start with cards that I received. Um, and I'd say that I received them this week, but I'm going to just stop to say that I opened them this week. This one is from Jessica Werner, who is my business development manager at Stampin' Up. She works for the home office, and she sent me a card in the mail on the week that we were supposed to be in Hawaii. Now, that might be why I didn't open my mail for a month. Maybe I'm a little bummed that we're still stuck in the house, but... Um, I was very grateful to get a, a note in the mail from her to celebrate um, accomplishments. This came from my, a girl on my team, Eileen Harmon, and um, it was a swap that we did, but she um, had surgery and sent me a swap anyway. Isn't it beautiful? Um, I love the bumblebee color. It is simple. It is just lovely i love the well-worn words here um, from the main catalog and of course paired up with the sunflowers it's stunning this one came from my good friend linda after we had an online retreat um and i'm gonna show you how uh to spritz your cardstock in a minute but at retreat this was one of their pillow gifts and I used um, the same technique that I'm going to show you today on this mini paper pumpkin box. These are available in the main catalog. And the outside is matte so that you can dye them. And I used rubbing alcohol and um, daffodil reinker on this one. But um, this is a thank you note from Linda thanking me for an awesome retreat. She couldn't be online because she was up in Maine and um, couldn't get to the internet. And once she did get online she was really excited and she made this card so pretty and birthday cards from leanna smith and then one from mary Jo, my buddy mary Jo schneider she sent me my favorite thing in the world starbucks so how can you go wrong with that i absolutely love it um such a cool pocket card. Great idea for a gift card holder. Um, okay. And next, let's see. I got a card from my friend Chris Robinson. Another beautiful card. So grateful. Using my absolute favorite suite of all times. This is came from my friend Val in Maine who sent me a birthday card. These are my favorite colors together, and it uses that, the one that I met Mary Jo over, which is really funny. It's a long story, but we uh, met. And this came from my friend, uh, Michelle Salcho. Oh, sorry, jeez, I can't talk today. And she wrote with a post-it note on the inside so, you could, so I could reuse the card, but isn't this beautiful? I love her coloring. I think she used um, pencils. It's just stunning watercolor pencils. I'll have to, um, I'm presenting at a online retreat this weekend for a friend and I think I'll have to bring this card because I'm showing pencils and I want to show the beauty of that. This came from Denise Breton. Look at how cute this is. It's like a little stand-up card so you can write your private message underneath the, the tab and then have it sitting on the table. What a cute idea for a card. It would be awesome for one of those um, calendars that sit on the desk too. Um, the two sides are glued down. So adorable. I just love it. Thank you, Denise. And this one isn't handmade, but it's cute anyway, so I thought I'd show it. Looks handmade, doesn't it? We could totally do that. It's on. Anyway. <laughs> okay right on to robin white who sent me this card she did her stamping first and i don't know if you can see it but it's embossed with the subtle embossing folder and there's wink Estella on there and it's all glittery and beautiful she did an amazing job i love the stamp set i love the framelits that she picked with that sentiment um i think i go back to the sentiment set over and over again it's my favorite one in the catalog and then um, a clean and simple, beautiful card from my friend Liz Bailey. 
Liz and Mary Jo and I and others meet on Zoom every Monday night, and we had our Monday night gathering last night, and I didn't get a chance to say thank you. I wasn't thinking, but thank you to Liz for such a beautiful card. I love simple done well. Okay. So that was my birthday cards and all the cards I got in July. If you sent me a card, that's thank you. And I'm sorry that I didn't get to opening them. Isn't that how things have been going? Um, anyway, this is watercolor paper. And Stampin' Up! sells a, water, a new watercolor paper as of this past catalog called Fluid 100. Now, one of the girls in my group, Diane Giarusso, was telling me about, because she loves watercoloring anyway, and she was telling me for um, why this was so much better than our old watercolor paper. And I was trying to understand um, why. And she said, because you can get it wetter um, and it's going to hold up better than other papers. And I said, wow, that's pretty awesome. And I hadn't worked with it before, but it is lovely to work with. It comes um, five by seven. Um, so what I did today was I took uh, and knocked everything over on my table here. Okay, let me put the cover back on that. I took 91% rubbing alcohol and added it to um, some spritzer. And then, ooh, it's smelly too, boy. I, I should really keep the cover on that. It's a good thing I'm not gonna be driving after my presentation today. Um, <laughs> it'll get you high. Um, so I took that and I took Balmy Blue Reinker and that fell, it went, it went flying when I dropped the rubbing alcohol. Um, I took Highland Heather and Balmy Blue and added it to two different spritzers. Now, again, this was how I colored the paper pumpkin boxes for that retreat. I'm not gonna show you the finished one, but oh gosh, can I just tell you a little secret about these? If you like to give full-size chocolate bars as a gift, look at they fit edge to edge and it's a perfect fit. So it's exactly six inches on the inside. If you're gonna wrap this, you have to wrap it um, with a six by six piece of paper, but you'd have to cut it down to five and three quarters so it still fits in the box. If you cut it to six, it'll be just too long. Um, but I just love that idea. Anyway, these spritzers are loaded and ready to go. I put seven drops of Highland Heather um, to a full vial of rubbing alcohol. And then I, I just love the Snowflake Splendor paper, but I'm not ready to do snowflakes just yet. So I thought I would make my own. Ooh, and that's good and smelly. I am not breathing deeply in case you were wondering. <laughs> All right. So this one is nice and dark and pretty, and I'm gonna set this one aside to dry. And I'm just gonna bring in ones that we've already started. Actually, I'm gonna put that over on my catalog because I have one other thing I wanna do. So this one, I took my five by seven and I scored it at three and a half to make it into a note card. And then I um, cut a layer for the top of this one and temporarily adhered it to the top. So this layer should come off and go back on fairly easy. But my idea for this was to spritz the top. Make sure I have the sprayer going the right way. And we'll let that one dry too. So I've got a couple things going on here. I've got the, the sheet over there that we just did, and then I've got this one that we started that has like a layer and an outline. Isn't that pretty? Okay. So I'm gonna stick that back together and put it off to the side and let it dry for a minute. So I haven't put ink on this stamp set at all since I got it, and I thought rather than snowflakes, we should come back to the current season, which is summer. and maybe put these on blocks and get, get them inky. I haven't put ink on these at all. So I'm kind of excited. Let's see, we've got 
I definitely want to use the whale because uh, that's just his colors. And you are kind of a big deal. So we can do that. And maybe um, my love for you is bigger than the ocean. That's how I feel about my stampers. What can I say? I could put that on a G block, but I don't have one on the table. So we're just going to go for it. Hoping all your birthday fishes come true. There's also whale done. Thanks a ton. Oh, I kind of like that. I'm very punny. I'm going to go. I'm going to go for it. Thanks a ton. Um, and, and then I think I'm going to put the fishes on one. And this itty bitty heart on one. And I don't know why. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get more blocks. Can I say? I didn't realize there were so many cute things in there. There's really cute images. So there's that heart that I put on a big old block that we can pull off and put on a smaller one. And then, so this is, um, someone was asking me about our Claremont stamps and if you're watching, they come right off and go on. There is a sticker that's involved um, that I don't use. I just use, I put the the stamp right on the block with no sticker. Um, I suppose we could use some of this greenery, but I'm, I'm not planning to stamp in green at all. And who doesn't love a seahorse? And some bubbles, and then we'll stop. Okay, and there's still a ton in that set that I didn't touch, but now that I have a G block, let's fit that better. It's always better if your stamp fits your block because then you don't have like a bunch of ink in places that it doesn't go because the block isn't there, right? Okay. So how about if we start with a big deal? And maybe we will, I think I want to like stamp him. I haven't stamped him yet, so I don't know how he's going to come out, but I think I want to stamp him in navy. And I'm going to, ooh, <laughs> good catch. Hey, Bonnie. Hi, Shirley. Okay, so now when I'm inking up, you'll notice I don't push down into these ink pads. They're, they're called firm foam. If you smoosh down, you'll actually get below the surface of the stamp and you only want to get ink on, across the top. So I'm going to um, just ink up kind of easy and just to get the ink on the top of the stamp. I do have a lot of newbies right now, so I want to make sure that I'm covering them. So this is the first time I'm stamping with this. And to me, it looks like it needs to be cleaned before I actually stamp with it. And that happens sometimes. So I'm going to have a go at cleaning it. So this is a mist and a scrub. Um, the Stampin' Mist, it comes in a bigger bottle now, but that's... Um, I prefer the smaller bottle on the table because, gosh, if I had any more stuff on this table, um, there wouldn't be room for me. Okay, so I cleaned it, and then we're gonna try again. So you can actually see how much better I got with the ink after cleaning it. It really does need to be cleaned the first time you get it. And some of what's happening is because I am stamping on watercolor paper, which has like a, a texture to it. So hang on, I'm gonna go again. No, I hate it. <laughs> Only when you're live. Okay, so I'm going to go again. And um, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a Stampin' Mat just to make sure. So these were um, originally discontinued, and they're, they were originally made for um, piercing a hole. Um like a piercing mat, but we use it underneath the photopolymer to get a nice clean image. 
So hopefully between that and I'll get a nice clean image this time. But again, it's on watercolor paper, so I might need to switch to a different color, but I'm hoping to stick to what I started with. Uh, I'm gonna say one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, and give this um, ink a good chance to absorb into the watercolor paper before I lift. I'm not holding on like the Dickens because I don't want the, the image to actually get fuzzy or anything. I just wanted to make sure that that one's better, that I have a good solid image. So now I'm gonna go in and punch out this guy. All of our punches are designed to be held upside down. This is my first time punching with this and punching watercolor paper is not the same. Oh, hang on. I need a little gusto. Wow, that didn't sound very good, huh? But it's just because it's the first time I'm punching with it and I'm punching watercolor paper. This stuff is super, super thick, okay? So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna get a piece of white and just stamp my guy again. I was hoping to get that to get that watercolor look on my on my dude, but I think I'm just gonna save my stuff and not do that. Okay, let's go again. So where's my whale? I put them all the way over to there. So you'll see how, what a difference it is when you stamp it on Whisper White because um, now he's got a nice clean. So the watercolor paper has this texture to it that makes it um, thicker it also makes it more difficult to directly stamp on, which is fine. All right, I'm gonna close this up because you know if I don't, I'll have my hand in it. And then we'll just punch out these dudes. You'll see how easy that the, it punches now that I'm not punching that thick stuff. Oh, this is gonna be good though. All right, I'm back. Sweet. Okay, so I had this idea um, for the first note card because what I did was I took the watercolor paper itself and just scored it. Um, yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> things aren't gonna be perfect every time you do them. It is what it is, we'll just We'll just do the best that we can with what we've got, right? Okay. So I am, it's so awesome inking up with photopolymer because you can see the ink absorb onto the stamp. So I'm just going to take my chances. I didn't clean this one, um, but I wanna cut this designer paper that I made, the spritzed paper for the front of this layer. So this is the leftover piece that I didn't destroy. And I know that this is three and a half by five. So I'm gonna cut this down to three. And then I think I'm gonna grab um, a navy layer. So maybe I'll do um, two and three quarter. So let's bring in the paper cutter. And we'll do, um, making a mess two and three quarter square and um whatever's left over we'll use on another card so we'll do two and three quarter square and then there'll be like i think like a two and a quarter inch piece but it's fine we can use both and then um we'll go up uh to three, so it'll be a full quarter inch layer there. I just love the new trimmer. It's been out for a while now. I only, ha I have the same blade on it since the beginning. 
It does not eat blades. And I'll tell you, the big trick with this is not to push into it. The old one, you used to have to kind of push against the blade, and that actually makes the blade dull. If you just glide back and forth, it does what it's supposed to. I love when stuff does that. All right. Come to mama. Okay, so we've got the three inch square that can go here. And I don't know if you guys saw the adhesive video from last week, but I actually still have my seal in this same dispenser. It's in the fast fuse dispenser, which is fine. It's working out. So I like this and I like this for sure. But I think he's going to need like a splash mark and maybe some bubbles. So before we put this all together, um, I'm going to stamp again. And weren't there bubbles? I think there were. Oh, those are fish. Let's see. I know we did bubbles. Maybe we didn't. No, there's bubbles. There they are. The photopolymer is hard to see through. So um, I'm just going to test it on my scrap paper here. Oh, yeah. And then we'll add um, some bubbles. And you can see I push too hard because it's down in between the grooves. Um, really, the ideal uh, way is not to have the stamp kind of get messy, just the top. So I'm going to clean that right away because then I'll go to stamp with it again and it'll be a mess. What can I say? I'm just excited. Push a little too hard. There are no mistakes in stamping. There are only embellishment opportunities. So I don't know about you, but I'm thinking that we need to bring in an old friend, uh, Wink Estella. So I'm going to go get that. And I think I'd also like to put uh, some ribbon somewhere. I'm going to grab two because I, I have about six of these open in the drawer. But um, one never knows how much is left because I use this stuff like candy. I think I, I put Wink Estella on everything. All right, I'm going to move my mat only because I have this other thing that I can get really messy. And um, I'm going to fling this. So I want the drops to be like real liquidy and flingable. How's that? New word, flingable. It's so pretty though. Oh my gosh. Okay. I need dimensionals. Oh, so fun. <laughs> this makes me smile. I love it. So cute. So you can see how easy these will go together. And these are note card size, so they're um, three and a half by five. I think I want to like... I don't know. I don't want him like right in the middle. I want him like off the plane, breaking the, breaking out of the box. Oh my goodness, he's adorable. I can't even stand it. Okay, I'm just gonna stare and look at him for a little bit. Okay, so then I have this other piece that's left over. And um, that's easy enough. I don't even think I'm gonna cut him out for that one. And if you ever score a piece of paper and you think you scored it in half, but you can see the back side from the front, um, just flip it over and use the long side as the front so you can't tell. Okay. So, how about, thanks a ton. And see how I'm not getting the ink to load right on the block? Again, it's a brand new stamp set, so these may need to be cleaned before I actually put them on 
paper. If it were red rubber, I would actually condition them and you can take like a, like a pencil eraser to the back, but see the difference in how nice it inked up this time? So thanks a ton. And then uh, maybe we'll fling some more. And then just add our little guy. Oh my gosh, I can't even stand it. He's so cute. Doesn't even really need a border there, does it? My goodness, okay, so I can let these set off to the side to dry. Okay, what do we have next? So we have like this paper and I've got all of these pieces that I just scored in half and we could just go all day with what's left. Um, so I'm gonna cut off the piece that was kind of the bad section. It's not about being perfect. We'll just kind of deal with what we got. Hey, Mary Ellen. Fling that, Stella, that's right. <laughs> work it. That's so funny. <laughs> I love flinging Stella. What can I say? Uh, so this is, it will actually be three inches long, which works out for a note card. Now we could go like this way. Yeah, let's do that. This is so pretty. Now I think I wanna bring in um, some of the snowflake ribbon. You know, I know it says it's for snowflakes, but really, is it? Oh, look, it's even got like some pink in it. I, when the light hits it, it's got like greens and pinks and oh, it is so pretty. Scissors, that might be helpful. Too funny. Okay, so we got scissors. I got my workout today. I get up to get the scissors. Okay, so we got that to start. And maybe like, should it go underneath or should it go like, off to the corner. What do you guys think? I'm waiting for it. Mess up. Well, thank you. <laughs> I do that plenty um, on my own. I mess up plenty. But that's okay. Because I'm making cards. Thank God I am not messing up things that, you know, really affect oh that's so pretty oh all right what are we gonna put for a sentiment on this how about yeah i might have to clean this so rhonda is it that you want me to mess up or is that i is it that i did mess up <laughs> I'm just curious. That's too funny. Got to keep me on my toes, especially when I'm live, right? This happens to be the exact size of that. So, but you know what? I like it out there. Oh, it's so pretty. All right, I'm gonna slide him up a little bit and slide this down. Auto-correct. <laughs> That's funny. That's okay. If you see my video from last week, you'll see that I don't need any help. I'm good at messing up. I, uh, but I was showing adhesives and by the end of the video, I think my hands were like, pretty close to being stuck together. If I didn't stop the video, I would have surely um, needed 
some assistance to get my hands apart. Let me see, I'm gonna, this kind of looks like a heart, um, this little guy, so I think I'm gonna use it as a splash mark. Should I do, I don't know. I wish I had my liquid glue on the table, but I'm just gonna go for it, ready? Wah. Get that. And then we'll um, wink a Stella it, cause that really will make it more like an embellishment. So simple, so pretty. Doesn't need to be like overdone. I think that one's done. So in that amount, short amount of time, we made three projects so far, and I could just keep going. We did, we did, had this one, and I was thinking something completely different for this. I love my little zebras, and um, I didn't show you this week's class yet. We have, um, it's free with an order, and uh, if you have questions, just let me know, but these are the four projects, and they're all embossed for you. Bows are tied, um, so you just get to sit back and do your stamping and have some fun. You can get the stamp set as part of the uh, cost of the class if you prefer. You can add on a Wink Costella because you know we need it for everything. Um, but I was thinking, since we have this guy out anyway for class this week, that we can just do this and then maybe... Um, add a little bit of accent. This is gonna bring them to life a little bit because I stamped it on the watercolor paper. It stamped a little bit light, but it's gonna be a-okay because the Winkostella will bring him back to life. So here we go. Whoop, whoop, whoop. All right, and then um, I'm bringing in a birthday sentiment from that same set. And you can see, I didn't stick it on my block clear, so I, I, like straight. I look at the block when I go to stamp. Um, and make sure that the block is straight. So I don't pay attention to um, the sticker at all. I just get the block straight with the paper. So cool. And I like that ribbon, so I think I'm gonna add a little embellishment here. We'll tie a bow, right? We can do it. I do like tying bows. I know not a lot of people do, but it's The wind's starting to pick up here. We have the remnants of the hurricane coming through. We had a tornado warning just a few minutes ago. But so far, so good. We haven't blown away or anything. It's okay, Rhonda. <laughs> it was just making me laugh. And then it was making me think. It's like, does she want me to mess up? Or does she see that I messed up? Because I do that all the time. That's nothing new. But it's all good. It's a good thing, like I said, it's it's like comedy hour. You, we'll have a cup of coffee together. See, I got my coffee mug. Um, it is, uh, I, I know it's, you're looking at it from the top down, but it's my camping mug. I wish I was camping. We're not allowed, because I'm from Massachusetts and we are not allowed in other states. <laughs> For real, it is what it is. I've come to terms with it. But. We do have half a house rented at the end of the summer and I'm taking a week off. I'm so excited. So I think that that's really adorable right there because I like the way that it's framing the happy birthday and not kind of messing with it at all. But I am gonna put a tiny, uh, in theory, a tiny bit of glue right below that knot to um, get it to sit tight for me. And back here, if it's ever loose, you can take a little bit of adhesive and then pinch so that it shows in the back and it doesn't show up on your project. So put the adhesive there and then we'll lay it down and really um, put a good amount of adhesive because it's watercolor paper on watercolor paper. And I could, I guess I could, I could pop this up, huh? 
I buried my dimensionals. That's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna dimensional the heck out of this. So you might notice that I use a lot of dimensionals. It's totally appropriate in this case. I don't want anything to be um, sagging when somebody gets this card in the mail, but I don't have to peel them all off. Um, I'm gonna peel off the four corners and I'm gonna peel off the center and the rest of it is just for height. They're sticky enough. Um, it's just the height thing. So then I'm gonna lay it down and then there's gonna be like a, a I'm gonna off center it just a little bit so that I get the shadow of where the spritzer didn't hit. So now I have like a white border that I didn't have to add paper. I just added the border. Isn't that cool? And it's so simple, my gosh. And that's just one of the papers I made. I made um, a whole second sheet, actually. I made three sheets. Um, so I think I'm gonna keep going with cards, but I probably could just keep you all day and I don't wanna do that because your time is important. But what do you think? Aren't these great? I just love them. But you get the idea and they go so fast and it's a great way to have a fistful of cards in a short amount of time. And that spritzer technique is wonderful. And like I said, I wanted to do Balmy Blue and Highland Heather, but I wasn't ready for snowflakes. So, um, did I cover everything I was gonna cover today? I, if you, like I said, if you haven't gotten the new catalog, I'm gonna flip this. Oh, I need my stand. If you haven't gotten the, um, what do you do? Oh, I did that last week, Melissa, in a video. If you come to the end of the road and go to the left or the right, you'll pull the transfer tape right off that, um, that roller. But in retrospect, if you come off the top and you kind of go over the top to release, it releases so much easier than the old adhesives and it doesn't pull it off the, the rocker and your adhesive is right where you want it to be, right at the top, when you go to start your next roll. So it's just a matter of changing your hand position so you're not going to the left and right, but you're going over the top. I hope that helps. And, and I would definitely look at last week's video. I emailed it out and, and there are bloopers at the end, which is really funny. It makes it easy to watch, but um, you definitely should check into that video because it really was wonderful. Um, it, and, it, and it covers that because I did have a couple of people on my team that ended up pulling the, the thing off the, and, it, and go over the top instead and it works really good, so. Thank you for stopping by today, everybody. Um, it's an exciting week with the holiday catalog rollout and a new customer interface. The pictures are beautiful on the website. It's so much easier to navigate. If you um, are placing an order with me on my website and you don't have a host code, make sure that you message me for one. That way you can be sure that you're in my store and so that I can send you a little something back in the mail because I always do that when people place orders. And um, let me see, BOGO went really well and people have been asking me about uh, doing it again and I happened to find a whole bunch of stuff um, right after I cleaned up my BOGO. So I'm gonna do it again in August, probably starting around the 16th. So it'll be an another four day um, go. And um, it will be everything that I have left, the 300 items, plus I'm gonna add things like wood mount stamp sets, big shot things. Um, I have these full alphabet letter set that I, I swore I'd never sell. I think it was 150 bucks. I'm gonna go look and see what I paid for them and price them fairly, but they'll be buy one, get one free, just like the, what we did. So yeah, I like them. I think that they were fun, so. And, and it's a great technique, I mean, and it's great to just kind of fling some Wink Estella around. <laughs> That's the new technique, we'll call it flinging stuff. But, all right guys, thank you so much. Love you guys, and we'll see you guys next week. If you have something that you want me to um, try, something new, 
let me know because I'm not afraid to mess it up. I'll teach you how not to do it so that you'll have better success than I do when you when you try it. So have a good week. Bye, guys.